Welcome to Comic Power. I am your host, Comic Killer 72 Today we're doing a new segment called Top 5 Tuesday. On some random Tuesdays, what I will do is pick out a top five list of something in particular. Today, the top five list is going to be the top five comic book movies that are in most need of a reboot. This is a situation where the characters are awesome, but the movies really sucked. So we're going to get right into it right now. Number five is Tank Girl. Released in 1995, this movie was a colossal failure. It had $25 million budget and it only made $4 million. The lead role was played by Lori Petty, who was an up-and-coming actress at the time. It has a Rotten Tomato score of 38%. If you're not familiar with Tank Girl, it's a real cult classic. It's the story of a woman in Australia who is a mercenary in a post-apocalyptic world where there is a water shortage. It was first published in Deadline Magazine number one in 1988, where it appears as an ongoing comic strip. The first real Tank Girl comic book was released in 1991 by Dark Horse Comics. These are both great collector's items to get. As stated, the character has a real cult following and has become like a venomous icon and is one of the most cosplayed characters among women other than Captain Marvel and Harley Quinn. The character made her return in comics in 2015 with 21st Century Tank Girl by Titan Comics. It immediately sold out showing that the character was more popular than ever. So the question is, in a Tank Girl reboot movie, who should play her? Well, I would vote for Miley Cyrus. The outrageous over-the-top sexuality of Miley's act and the character both fit together very well, I think would be a good fit. If you don't like my choice for Tank Girl, then tell me your choice in the comments section below. If you're speculating, Tank Girl number one, a 9.8 CGC sells for $486 on the average. This book is crazy rare. Up next at number four is Spawn from 1997. The character was created in 1992, so for him to get a movie in 1997 was actually pretty quick and probably a little too quick because they didn't quite do it right. It has a Rotten Tomato score of only 19%. The lead role was played by Michael J. White, and I really didn't have any problem with him playing this role. He really didn't have much to work with. The script was really, really bad, and the special effects were pretty lousy. Another high note was John DeGuisiamo playing the clown, a.k.a. the Violator. He was good, but the movie still sucked. So for a Spawn reboot, who would I cast to play the lead role? I would cast Derek Luke. I think he would be perfect for the part. He's best known for playing Booby Mouse in Friday Night Lights. For the role of Wanda, Spawn's wife, I would cast Gugu Mbatha Raw. This beautiful English actress was most recently seen in the film Concussion opposite Will Smith. In the realm of comics, Spawn number one was released in May of 1992. It's the first full appearance of Spawn, and 9.8 CGC is currently selling for about $71. Not big money like Tank Girl because Tank Girl is so rare. Spawn number one sold 1.75 million copies. There is a demand, but the supply is so limitless, it'll never go to astronomical numbers. Number three is Green Lantern from 2011. This was a real stink fest starring Ryan Reynolds. The guy played Deadpool played Green Lantern, and somehow it didn't end his career to play a bad Green Lantern and play a bad Deadpool the first time around, but that's another story. This train wreck of a movie had a Rotten Tomato score of only 26%. They attempted to establish the Green Lantern Corps, which is what you want to do, and even the Sinestro character looked very good. It matched very closely to the way he looks in the comics, which is good, but once again, we got a bad script, cheesy special effects, and it's just a complete train wreck of a movie. So, in a Green Lantern reboot, who's going to play him? People thought it was going to be Chris Pine, but he's been signed to the Wonder Woman project to play Steve Trevor, and DC fans are not trying to hear Steve Trevor turn into to Green Lantern later. One name bouncing around is Alex O'Laughlin from Hawaii 5 fame. If DC decides to go with the Jon Stewart version of Green Lantern, my pick would be the British actor Daniel Kaluuya. He's always been a very good supporting actor. He hasn't got a chance to be a lead yet, but this could be his breakout role. Green Lantern was first introduced in All-American Comics number 16 back in 1940. Golden Age comics are extremely rare and extremely viable for key issues. If you had a 9.8 of this comic book, it would be worth $1.8 million. No one ever thought these funny books would be worth any money, but look at them now. That brings us to number two on our list, which is the Fantastic Four. There have been three theatrical releases between 2005 and 2015 for this franchise. And all three of them have sucked horribly. There's the 2005 Fantastic Four movie with a Rotten Tomato score of 27%.
And last and definitely least is the 2015 reboot, which has a Rotten Tomato score of 9%. So if you make a movie and 91% of people hate it, you really have a problem. Now, let's not blame this on Marvel. They had nothing to do with it. The movie rights to the Fantastic Four belong with Fox Studios. That's where the blame starts and stops at. The friction between Marvel and 20th Century Fox is for another video on another day. If you're curious, there's a 1990 Fantastic Four movie that was never intended for release that's really, really, really bad. It was only intended for keeping the rights to the characters. If you want to find it, you can find it, but it's really, really awful. It's even worse than the three films that were actually released. We don't even have the time to discuss what makes these movies so horrible. You just have to see them for yourself, but I wouldn't put that punishment on my worst enemy. The biggest problem with all the films is Doom. They couldn't seem to get Doctor Doom right. Such a classic villain, they just completely ruined the character. So the question is, how do we get a proper Fantastic Four film? The only answer is to give it back to Marvel. Fox just needs to give it up and give Marvel back the rights. You tried and you failed, Fox. It's over. This franchise deserves better. The Fantastic Four's popularity has waned, but they are the flagship characters for the Marvel Universe, released in 1961. If this book is a failure, then nothing else comes out of Marvel in terms of superheroes ever in the future. Fantastic Four number one is probably one of the top five most coveted Silver Age books to get. The estimated value of Fantastic Four number one from 1961 is around about $480,000. It would be higher if the movies didn't suck so bad. And that brings us to number one. Sound effect, please. I think we all can agree on this being number one. Catwoman. And not just any Catwoman, but the Holly Berry version of Catwoman. This travesty of a movie has a Rotten Tomato score of just 9%. The best Catwoman ever to me was Michelle Pfeiffer. The Anne Hathaway version was just mm, okay, I guess. And many others have played the character, but this Holly Berry movie version is just uh, abysmal. It takes place outside the Batman continuity, which is a mistake. They changed the character's name from Selena Cow to Patience Phillips. The acting is wooden. The screenplay is so horrible you'd think an eight-year-old wrote it. Okay, so how to fix this mess? First of all, you must spin it off from a Batman movie first to establish the character. Of course, you need the right director and the script, but you gotta get the right actress as well. I'm gonna nominate Jessica Biel. You need somebody in their early 30s with a lot of physical attributes and some very striking looks. And you try to tell me she wouldn't make an awesome Catwoman. DC is busy with Batman and Superman, but we know there will be a new Batman trilogy and Catwoman has to show up. Hopefully I'll get my way and we'll get that proper Catwoman spinoff. The character deserves it. She was first introduced in Batman number one back in 1940. It's also the first appearance of the Joker and she was only called the cat at the time. This book at a 9.8 would be worth $2.4 million. A graded 9.2 sold for $567,000 in 2013. That brings us to the conclusion of Top 5 Tuesday. If there is something in particular that you want to do a Top 5 on, please leave your suggestion in the comments. Be sure to visit my website, comicpower.net. And be sure to subscribe to this channel and share it with others so I can grow it and keep making great videos for you guys. And don't forget, I do sell comics at my eBay at this link right here. Until next time, this is Comic Killer 72 signing out, saying bye bye. Feedback in the comments and subscribe.